Well, howdy there, folks. What a absolute beast of a video I have put together for you guys here today. We have stocks crashing all over this market. Google stock got absolutely wrecked today. It is getting even worse after hours. It could be another ugly one tomorrow. We have so many stocks to speak about in today's video. We've got to talk about PayPal, new 52-week low here today. We've got to talk about what happened with Meta. We've got to talk about the earnings and the stock price movement, which is absolutely shocking, okay? We've got to talk about the markets in general. We've got to talk about Amazon earnings, which are coming tomorrow. What's my confidence level in that? We've got to talk about Palantir in this video. Uh, I mean, there's so many stocks I got to talk about. It's just ridiculous. So kick back, uh, you know, grab yourself a drink, chill out for a bit, grab yourself a snack because this is an absolute beast. If I'm sitting down for a video, folks, that means it's an animal of a video to go through, okay? And that's what we have to go through here today. It's busy times, folks. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being subscribed to the channel. And especially for a beast video like this, this could be this could end up being one of the longest videos I ever put out in the, in the channel's history, okay? Uh, first and foremost, let me thank everybody for tuning in to my Twitch live stream here today. That was the biggest Twitch live stream in the history of Twitch in regards to a stock market earnings live stream. It's never been one bigger than that. That was absolutely insane and tomorrow could be could be even bigger okay absolute craziness if you haven't joined me on twitch check out the description area the link to join me on twitch is there thank you everybody that joined me that was history 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 tomorrow we got amazon's earnings i will be listening to the amazon call on there plus i'm going to react to not only their earnings and phase earnings you got intel and ford in chipotle all tomorrow so craziness 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 okay already before we get into all these stocks and all the, you know, everything going on there, I've got to speak about the state of the stock market because there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that not people understand what's actually happening here, why Wall Street's selling these stocks off so heavily, and uh, how bad it will potentially get here, okay? The first thing you got to understand about this market is the S&P 100, or the S&P 500 closed today under 4,200. Now, why is that important? The reason that's important is so many of these Wall Streeters have been talking about as long as the S&P 500 stays above 4,200, we're fine. We're in the clear. I, you know, I watch so much CNBC on a daily basis. I hear all these Wall Streeters go on. All these folks, all these Wall Streeters that run the funds and, you know, uh, that's all these folks do, okay? And they go on CNBC and they talk about what they're thinking in regards to the market and where they think things are going. And all these folks have been very clear. As long as we stay above 4,200, we're fine in this market. We just broke under 4,200. This is when a lot of these Wall Streeters start getting very concerned and very scared now that we broke under 4,200. It's a very important level. Do I care personally about the market being under 4,200 or above 4,200? I don't freaking care. But I can tell you there's a huge part of Wall Street that cares immensely about breaking under that 4,200 level, folks. It matters in a significant way to the state of the stock market right now. On top of that, you got TLT down again today. This is something that has just been brutal that a lot of people have been trying to get into, thinking they can bottom call TLT. And it's just brutalizing people right now where, you know, and TLT is not usually something you would expect to lose a lot of money in. But unfortunately, everybody that's been trying to pile in TLT is losing a lot of money. It's not like a stock where a stock you kind of, you know, go in with the expectation of like, oh, this could go bad and this could go bad fast. TLT is not usually that type of thing, but it is that type of thing right now. And it doesn't really seem like it's getting better anytime soon, right? The NASDAQ also just broke under 13,000 now at this point in time. NASDAQ got hit hard today, 318 points. And think about this for a moment. The NASDAQ got hit about 2.5% today. Imagine just for a moment if Microsoft had fallen today. Microsoft was a one dog that held up today. Just imagine if Microsoft fell, right? Microsoft, you're talking about that's about a two and a half trillion dollar market cap. If that baby would have fallen five, ten percent, it would have been a three and a half, four percent, five percent type NASDAQ down. Just a shocking day. Microsoft is, you know, kind of held the NASDAQ together, even though it was still an ugly day out there, right? Now, Here's Wall Street, and here's what they're very scared of, okay? Like, like, why was Wall Street selling every stock in sight here today, right? Wall Street's very scared right now. They are scared of what's coming tomorrow. Tomorrow we get GDP data. We also get Jerome Powell talking. Now, there's a major fear that essentially the GDP data is going to come in hot. J. Powell is going to come in super hawkish. And there's going to be a real potential of 
another rise of inflation going into 2024, and there's a real potential of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. This is what Wall Street is scared of, and this is why they're frightened right now, okay? And so if you want to know why Google stock sold off 10 percentage points today, or almost 10 percentage points, it has nothing to do with Google's earnings. Uh, you know, the numbers are phenomenal. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with the conference call, anything like that. The bottom line is Wall Street's freaked out right now, okay? Now, we got to ask ourselves, is this fear real or is it more just an anxiety fear by Wall Street, okay? And in order to understand that a little deeper, you've got to look at some more insight and data. And I have the data to show you if this is a real fear or not by Wall Street, okay? So this is trueflation data. Which trueflation data, I always, tr I always trust more than the government data, in my personal opinion. And trueflation data had us at much higher CPI numbers last year than what Wall Street had us at. Now they have us at much lower numbers than Wall Street has us, or excuse me, than, than the government has us at. I trust the numbers more than I trust the government numbers uh, in terms of trueflation. Trueflation has us at under 2.4% uh, trueflation inflation rate right now, okay? Now, in regards to this, right, the huge component that you got to understand of overall inflation data is usually housing. Okay, of the overall CPI numbers, housing. This is an article that was written by Barron's at this time last year, late October 2022. Okay, the rental market is cooling. Official inflation data won't show it anytime soon. And they were talking about probably at some time, maybe next year, late next year, you'll start to see, obviously, the, the housing data, the rental data start to come in. And this is a huge component of the overall inflation numbers, it's something the Federal Reserve looks at, it, like, looks at it in a substantial way, right? And in regards to this, okay, the reason you, the reason rents are starting to go in the right direction is it all comes down to housing prices, okay? So when housing prices were going insane, guess what ended up following? Rents increasing, increasing, increasing dramatically. And you can get away with that as long as the demand's super high for rents and on top of that, home prices are going up substantially. The moment that housing prices start falling, is a moment that that following year you're not going to be you're either going to have to go down on rents or you're going to have to keep rents the same or you're going to have to do some sorts of incentives like a lot of apartment complexes are now starting to resort to that I'm starting to hear in some of these hot markets where they're doing incentives of like you know you get two free months you get this they're not going up right and as somebody I can just tell you that as somebody that's a landlord uh, personally right I have two uh, real estate investment properties I don't see myself being able to go up next year. I just don't. And I have a property in Vegas. I have a property in Arizona. I do not see myself being able to go up on rents in 2024. I think I'm just going to have to keep them flat. And this is something you're going to see in many of the biggest markets across the United States over this next year. Okay. Now, this is another thing. You have a crazy amount of supply. I don't think people even realize how many, like, like, how many insane amount of condos and apartments are being built in the United States of America. It's off the charts, record highs. Like this makes what was going on back in the, the 80s and 90s and 2000s, even in, in, in the you know previous housing bubble, this looks like nothing, you know, in terms of all those past time periods. Look at the chart in front of you, folks. If you're just listening to this video, look at this chart for just a moment, okay? New privately owned housing units under construction, units in buildings with five units or more, okay? So what this basically tells you is there's a crazy amount of new apartment complexes, in multifamilies that are hitting the market this year and will hit the market next year. With all of that inventory coming online and the fact that home prices are not going to be able to go up right now because of the mortgage rates we're in right now, this basically smells a situation that rents are either going to have to stagnate or potentially go, guess what, down, okay? Which is going to help CPI in a massive, massive way, right? Now, we had the largest drop in modern history in real wages. Real wages looks at like what a person earns versus what inflation's at. And we have the largest drop in modern history. We've just recently started to tick back up in regards to real wages. Now, I think we're going to play a little bit of catch up here over this next year or so in regards to real wages starting to pick up and pick up, right? So a huge component of inflation data, which goes around housing and rents, is no longer a factor. No longer a factor. If you have a home on the market right now, you have to drop your price and you have to drop your price more over this next several months because mortgage rates are sky high right now. People can't afford it. And then on top of that, if you are a landlord, you have to keep your rents the same or you have to drop them over this next year. Okay. 
And that's going to help Im immensely. And so very, light, very much like Halloween 4, she woke up from a dream. And she realized it was just a dream I had that Michael Myers was in the room, okay? And he came out from under the bed. It's the same exact situation that we're dealing with right now. Wall Street's paranoid about we're going to get super hot CPI data and, and all this stuff's going to be a disaster in 2024. And um, I just believe they're in a dream right now. Now, the only other component you could really say, right, is oil prices and what that does to gas prices. Well, here's a real reality around oil prices. Oil prices are actually, you, you might think oil prices are sky high right now. Oil prices are actually down 3% in the past year, okay? 3% in the past year. So as of right now, oil prices are actually staying where we'd want to see oil prices at, right? Now, also think about this a little higher level for a minute, okay? You might have a very negative opinion of Joe Biden or a very positive opinion. You might think he was a horrible vice president. You might have thought he was a great vice president. You might think he's a horrible president. You might think he's a great vice president. I don't really care what you think, okay? But what I do care about is there's no debate that Joe Biden's one of the best politicians we've ever seen in modern history. That man wins elections. He knows how to play his cards right. So he's in positions of power. There's no debating that. You can debate if he's horrible or bad at whatever he does, but as being a politician, he's one of the greatest ever. He's better than the Clintons. Let that sink in for a moment. So being that this man is so damn good at a, being a politician, do you think, do you think he's going to let oil prices run into the election? Do you really think that with all the connections that man has and a lot of people that potentially owe him favors and how he, well he knows how to play this political game? Do you think he's going to let oil prices run into an election year? He didn't, get, he didn't become vice president for eight years by accident. He didn't get, you know, be such a great politician for all his time by accident. He didn't become president of the United States by accident, okay? The man knows how to play this game. So if you think that that man's going to let oil prices run to $150 a barrel in an election year, I don't know, man. I got a bridge to sell you behind my house that goes straight over the ocean, okay, here in Vegas. The man knows how to play the game, okay? So, oil price. Is oil price really a significant worry for 2024? My opinion, no. Or rents or home prices in general a big worry for 2024 for CPI data? My opinion, no, okay? Something to keep in mind there. Now, the Russell, folks, the Russell Wilson is... We're barely higher than we were back in September of 2020, folks. If you go back to October, if you go back to around this time, literally in 2020, the Russell Wilson was higher than it is now. That's crazy to think about that, folks. Let that sink in for a moment, right? And that just I just want to show you that so you understand the devastation of the small caps over the last three years or so, right? Now, let's start talking about some stocks, okay? Let's get into some stock talk here. So, first off, first off, Amazon. Amazon earnings are coming tomorrow. Now, am I more confident, less confident in Amazon after I've seen now Google's earnings, I've seen Microsoft's earnings, I've seen Meta earnings, and all those matter significantly for ultimately Amazon. Google has a cloud business, so I've gotten to see their numbers. Google has an advertising business, obviously. I've gotten to see their numbers, right? And guess what? Amazon has the biggest cloud business, and Amazon has a huge advertising business, now the third biggest business, right? I've seen meta numbers now at this point in time, which meta is obviously massive, massive advertising company, right? And you're not going to advertise unless you're advertising a lot of goods on meta, right? And I've seen Microsoft's earnings, which Microsoft has an ads component in their business, but they also have a cloud business, right? In Azure. So based upon everything I've seen and based upon what I believe is going on here, I believe Amazon's numbers are going to be booming. I believe Amazon's going to report some phenomenal, phenomenal earnings tomorrow. And likely some huge beats on several of the key categories, right? But with that being said, this does not mean that Amazon's stock price is going to go up tomorrow necessarily, okay? I think it definitely could, but it doesn't guarantee it at all. Amazon coming with the biggest beats in the world. Listen, folks, Microsoft came in with a grade A income statement. A grade A. And what did that stock get? It got a 3% gain. The stock's actually down in the past three months, even after that A grade income statement yesterday, right? What about Google McDougal? Google McDougal had an A plus. We can call that like a 97%. If, they, if this was a test, they got like a 97%, okay? 
Google McDougal, A plus earnings. And what did Google get with it? Uh, down 9.6% today, down another two and a half percentage points after hours. Uh, are you kidding me? And it's not even like Google went into this like, oh, it's a super high PE stock. No, it's actually a super cheap PE stock based upon any of the trends uh, this stock has had over time, right? So look at Meta, right? Meta, Meta was down 4% today and it's down after hours. This is the craziest thing, folks. Let me be very clear. This was an A++ earnings from Meta. It's 100% perfect. If this was a test and the teacher was giving it, Meta just got a perfect score, a 100%. Look at the numbers, folks. And I told you the numbers are going to be shockingly great. And man, were they shockingly great. They killed what analysts were expecting, okay? Revenue grew 23% for them. Who was telling me last year Meta was done? Who was telling me? A lot of people. They were wrong, every single one of them. Cost and expenses dropped 7%, folks. Income from operations up 143% year over year. 143 flipping flapjacking percent. Net income up 164%. Diluted EPS up 168% year over year. That's it. That's it, folks. That's it. It gets no better than that. For Meta, it gets no better. For any stock, it gets no better. Their revenue came at $34 billion plus dollars versus $27 billion and some change in the same quarter last year. Their cost of revenue hardly went up compared to how much their revenue went up. I mean, it's insane. Research and development, they kept that pretty in line. Marketing and sales, they actually dropped that number nearly a billion dollars year over year. General administrative, they dropped that over a billion dollars year over year. So here we are with the company's revenues are skyrocketing and their costs are going down immensely. Are you kidding me? Total costs and expenses were actually down year over year by over one and a half billion dollars. Incredible. Income from operations came in at $13.7 billion. That's versus 5.6 in the same quarter last year. Net income came in at 11.5 versus 4.3 billion in the same quarter last year. You've got to be flipping my flapjacks. Diluted EPS 439 versus 164 in the same quarter last year. I mean, folks, if I had to put this in music terms, this was the take care of an earnings, okay? This was a take care. It's like, that's the peak. That's a pinnacle. You can't beat it, okay? Yeah, it's just, it, 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 it's checkmate. It's checkmate, okay? Absolutely incredible. And then to add even more positivity around these earnings, the company now has over $60 billion of cash and cash equivalents and marketable securities at the, as the end of the quarter. Over $60 billion. They're now up total assets of $216 billion. That's versus total liabilities of $73 billion. It's $142 billion of stockholder equity. Okay? Now, do keep in mind, this is very important. Okay, Very important. When you see the cash number and you see the marketable securities number, Okay, something that's very important everybody keeps in mind in regards to Meta is that number will likely, it's not a guarantee, but that number will likely go down over this next, I would call it um, six months or so. Now, why is that number going to go down? They're supposed to bring in a crazy amounts of profits. The reason that number could go down, it's not a guarantee, but the reason it could go down, and it's important everybody understands this, is I believe the company's going to buy a silly amount of shares back over this next several months. Next several months, folks. I don't think it's going to be a small amount. I think Zuckerberg could come in and buy, buy back 20 to $30 billion worth of stock over a short period of time. Not a guarantee. It's a possibility. And I think a realistic possibility. Being where the valuation's at right now and being that they got the big share buyback on and they got a lot of capital around and they're going to have silly money coming in. And then guess what? 2024? Political season. Get ready to make more money than ever. You know how much is going to be spent on the presidential election? You know how much is going to be spent on any of the local elections? Oh my gosh, folks, okay? So money's not going to stop pouring in for Meta. It's just going to keep pouring in for Meta. My gosh, okay? So buybacks. I don't, don't be surprised if they buy a lot of shares back. Look at the advertising revenue by geography here, folks. Shocking numbers. U.S. and Canada, almost $15 billion. That's versus 12.7 in the same quarter last year. Look at Europe, 7.7 7 they did in revenue, 7.7 7 billion versus 5.7 in the same quarter last year. Asia Pacific, 6.8 versus 5.7 in the same quarter last year. 
And look at rest of the world. 4-1 in this quarter versus $3 billion in the same quarter last year. I mean, every market was up a minimum of a billion dollars. Just on a year-over-year basis. Like, let that sink in for a moment, folks. The business is on fire. And here's even a better part of this. Here's maybe the best part of this is. Instagram Reels is still an early stage of monetization. Early stage of monetization. So when you, you got to understand, like Instagram Reels has taken off like a crazy for a product for Instagram and honestly on Meta's platform as well, Facebook, right? It's taken off like crazy, but we're still early in the monetization time period, folks. Early. So IG Reels is going to ramp the monetization over the next several years, so if you think like, oh, IG Reels, this can't get any more out of that. No, they're like in like the second inning, I would call it, of monetization of Reels, if not the first inning, okay? It's very similar to like Tesla, right? Tesla ramps the Cybertruck over a several year period. It's not like all of a sudden, whoa, we're, we're at max production. No, that's not the way it works. They ramp over a time period. Meta does it very similar in a very intelligent manner. They get everybody to use this product like crazy, love the product like crazy. Some could say addicted to the product like crazy. And then they come in and they start ramping monetization. And they do that over a several year time frame, okay? So what you're going to see in IG Reels is likely bigger numbers, bigger numbers, bigger numbers over the next, not just several quarters, but next several years, folks, okay? Now, look at the net income, folks. Look at this. It's incredible. It does, I mean, this, this to me as an investor of the stock makes me so dang happy. Check this out. They did $4.3 billion dollars in net income in the same quarter last year. Then they bumped it up to 4.6 billion, then 5.7 billion, then 7.7 billion, and now they just did 11 and a half billion dollars in net income. Where's next quarter gonna be? 13 billion, 14 billion, 15 billion, 16 billion? Like, I don't know what it's gonna be. It's just gonna be a crazy big number. Like, maybe a record, sky high record quarter for Meta overall in regards to their net income. It's gonna be incredible, incredible folks, okay? I mean, my gosh, look at the diluted EPS. It went from $1.64 to $1.76 to $2.20 to $2.98 to $4.39 in diluted EPS this most recent quarter. What's next quarter? $5, $6, $7? Like, take your best guess. It's going to be a silly big number. That's what I can tell you. It's going to be a silly big number, okay? Now, also, if that wasn't, you know, all the financials are just booming for the company, right? And keep in mind, ads were actually down in terms of the uh, amount of money they could get per ad. was actually down year over year. Imagine when that starts to go up again. <laughs> Family monthly active people. This is an important number. Came in at $3.96 billion. Now, there was a view, if we go back to around Q2 2022, there was a view that, oh, Meta has reached peak. They reached peak uh, when it comes to monthly active people. They, they maxed out in Rona and they can't grow it anymore. Well, since everybody, a lot of people, thought Meta had, had maxed out the amount of people using the service, they went from $3.65 billion to now $3.96 billion, folks. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay. Now, this is Facebook. Keep in mind, Facebook, I've been here since 2012 when this company went public. Facebook is done. It's the next MySpace. They can't grow anymore. Okay. And look it, they just grew again to another new record. Daily active people, daily active users, excuse me, came in uh, oh, well over 2 billion, almost 2.1 billion Facebook daily active users on FB. Okay? If you look at monthly active users, oh my gosh, well, they're, over, they're well over 3 billion people now at this time. Uh, another new all time high. So I've been here, like I said, oh, for over a decade. Oh, Facebook's gone. They can't grow anymore. And yet they just keep growing. They just keep growing. Okay. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Now, I told you guys analysts are too low with their numbers. Sure enough, I was 100% right. They're too low with these numbers for this year, clearly, because they were massively wrong on this quarter Meta just came through with. They're going to they're gonna have to bring up all their estimates for the next quarter as well. So these numbers you're seeing, the 1355 there, analysts are going to have to bring that number up to probably $15 of EPS expected for this this year, which means next year they're going to probably have to bring up their numbers to, I would guess analysts are going to bring their numbers up to about 18 to 18.50 expected for next year. So when you look at this stock, it looks already insanely cheap considering they're now growing revenues 20 plus percent at 23 times this year's expected numbers in 18 times, but it's actually trading way cheaper than that. It's probably trading at about 21 to maybe 20 times this year's numbers, and then probably trading at, let's call it 15 to 16 times 
uh, the 2024 expected numbers. I mean, come on. Come on. For a company that's grown revenues 20 plus percent, holy smokes. And this is with them investing so much money into AI. I mean, they're going to, they could set themselves up to win AI more than anybody while simultaneously winning the metaverse opportunity, VR and AR, as much as anybody. Like, like it's, it's crazy. They're putting up these numbers while investing so heavily into the business. Okay. So, in regards to stock, right? Based upon these numbers I'm seeing from Meta, based upon that conference call, I'm 100% convinced this is going to be a million dollar plus position in 24 months. Million dollars plus in 24 months. The way I looked at how lean this business is now running at this point in time, folks, and we're going to get to Tesla, Palantir, and a bunch of other stocks uh, still here, PayPal, and all those others, and, and what's going on there. But to just cap off Meta, folks, um, there's no doubt in my mind this is going to be another double up for Meta from here. And I know it's just had a huge move. It's going to double up over the next 24 months. And I think it's going to double up regardless of what happens in the macroeconomic landscape. Because Meta has leaned out the business so much now that they, they talked about doing some hiring and that's great. But even if we got hit with a recession, Meta can easily cut back on the hiring like that. And, and Zuckerberg has just proved he can lean out the company as well as anybody. And he just proved he could lean out the company and accelerate the revenue growth in a massive way. That's the most beautiful thing. He proved to everybody that if I lean out this company, not only is it, is it cutting costs, but we're actually going to accelerate our growth and we're actually going to move faster than just about any company in the world. And that's incredible because not many people could pull off that feat. Usually it's seen as, oh, you're going to cut a bunch of employees while well, your company's screwed then. You're not going to be able to move as fast. Nope. By cutting all, the, all those employees, they move faster now. Their revenue is way accelerated. Their product innovation is way accelerated. I got the Quest 3. It's an amazing product. I, I mean, I, I can't believe how much progress they made just since the Quest 2 in regards to that product. And I'm just looking at what they got going on the AI front. And I'm looking at the revenue growth and what they got going on IG Reels. And oh my gosh, okay. I feel so comfortable having that as my number one position. And I can make an argument that the stock's even cheaper now than it was at this time last year when it was a $100 stock based upon the numbers this company's putting up, based upon the way Zuckerberg has now managed his business and what he's proven, incredible, folks. Absolutely incredible. I love having it as my biggest position in the public account. I should be buying shares tomorrow. I should be buying shares tomorrow. Straight up. No doubt. Okay. Tesla, my Tesla. So I've been very clear about Tesla uh, for quite a while now. I don't like the short term on Tesla. I do love the long term on Tesla. But this is another thing that goes into the problems with Tesla in the short term, okay? Uh, you know, basically Tesla's getting desperate. So now I got this email to my inbox here today. Buy a new Tesla, keep your free supercharging. I have free supercharging on my Model X. And, um, you know, this is just a sign of desperation. Even after all the price cuts and everything they've done here, they're still trying to do anything possible. So, you know, and the worst part is for me, they haven't made enough changes with the X over the past few years to make me say, oh, yeah, I got to go get got to go get a, an X, um, you know, a new X. It just hasn't been enough happening there, um, to be quite frank, to me, for me to say, oh, I'm going to go buy an X and take out a loan at these sorts of interest rates right now. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, so it definitely reeks of a little bit of desperation from Tesla. You know, I keep track of everything that's going on with Tesla all the time. And uh, just seeing all the moves, it definitely smells of, of desperation right now. And like, we need to hit our quarterly numbers and we're a little afraid and we need to start doing gimmicks like this. And I just don't know how many people they're going to be able to get to do that, to be honest. Um, it is an incentive and it's a big incentive. But just like, I got my ex in 2019, 2020. I just don't see a reason to do that. I could see some people that maybe got an X a long, long time ago, maybe some of the first group, the 2016, 2017. But the problem is it's a really small number of people have those old Xs because Tesla sold such small volumes back in those days. So anyways, just a little food for thought there. Now, on a good front in regards to Tesla, right? Cybertruck. Somebody posted this photo, uh, you know, basically Tiesto, uh, you know, posting in front of, um, you know, the Cybertruck there. Folks, you got to understand if you were to add up every single vehicle in the world next year, in terms of how many people are talking about it on social media, how many people are posting about it on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere, X, you wouldn't even come close to how many people are going to be posting about the Cybertruck next year. The amount of images of Cybertruck next year, the amount of people debating Cybertruck. Oh, it's ugly. Oh, it's the best thing ever. Oh, here's five things I hate about my Cybertruck. Oh, here's five things I love about my Cybertruck. 
You're never going to see anything like this before. Not even close. Like I said, you could add every vehicle in the world together, and it won't even get close to the amount of impressions Cybertruck will get next year, which is going to bode very well for Cybertruck sales, obviously, for the next five to ten years. But on top of that, it will start to help out, actually, Tesla's just overall ecosystem, people talking about Tesla, seeing what's going on there, researching it more. It will help Model 3 sales, Model Y sales, and everything like that. And so that's just another thing that if you're thinking about 2025 and beyond, Tesla sets up absolutely phenomenal. If you're thinking about Tesla the next six months, it sets up, it sets up absolutely horrible. So you got to div- diverge between Tesla the next six months and Tesla the next six years. And they're two totally different stories. The next six months for Tesla is a bad story. It's a horror story. It's Michael Myers. It's freaking Halloween, okay? It's Freddy Cougar. The next six years, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better. So, you know, there's a big divergence that's going on there, okay? PayPal. What else do I say about PayPal? This is dumb. I mean, it's just dumb. The pricing on PayPal is dumb. Dumb, dumb. Very dumb. Um, I wish I could use a more eloquent term, but it's dumb. We're trading now. At, at four P's that were very similar to where Meta went down to. Meta, I remember last year, was somewhere between like a 10 and a 12 forward P. It's exactly where PayPal is now. We're under an 11 forward P on PayPal. And that's if analyst numbers are right. That PayPal could come in and beat. We're under a 10 for 2024. I mean, it's just dumb. I, like, I don't know what else to say. It's just, it's, it's stupid, guys. It's stupid. Okay. EPS, this is what analysts have for EPS. Uh, about a little under 14% EPS growth expected. For this current quarter we're in, they could beat that. 13% for the next quarter, okay? Uh, analysts have them doing about 7.8% revenue growth in this current quarter where they're about to report, and 8% next quarter. You know, after seeing the numbers Meta reported, the numbers Google reported, the numbers Visa reported, I'm more confident than ever that PayPal is just fine, and they're going to report great numbers. No doubt in my mind. Do Am I afraid, like, PayPal is going to report some disaster? Absolutely not. I think they're going to report good numbers. I think they're going to report really good guidance if they have any guidance to provide out there, which hopefully they do. Now, I believe we're going to get a different situation here with PayPal than we've gotten with maybe Google and some of these other stocks, okay? I believe PayPal is going to come in, report really good numbers, and I believe the stock is going to fly. I hope it doesn't fly to the moon because, remember, I'm still buying the stock all the way to, I'm going to stop buying the stock at some point in Q1 of 2024, right? Could be January. But I, I believe it's going to fly to the moon when they report, okay? And, and here's why. Here's why I think it's going to be different than the other stocks that reported really good numbers, okay? The reason being is you've got to understand there's, there's a phenomenon in the stock market versus, you know, when you've got a, got a stock that's flying high versus a beaten down dog, right? And the amount of buying pressure that went into that stock versus the selling pressure, right? And so when it comes to PayPal, it's a stock that's down 30% this year. Google, even after today's huge drop, is still up 41% this year, which is an insane move. Meta's up 140%, 140%, folks, uh, this year. And that's even after the most recent drop, right? So you got to understand, like, Meta and Google were not priced to perfection, but they had such huge momentum and such relentless buying pressure into those stocks that they were due to just have a drop regardless, right? And on, on a stock like PayPal, it's had nothing but selling pressure for the longest time. PayPal doesn't need to report a shockingly great n- quarter to probably have that stock go up in a significant, significant manner. There's a big difference between being priced for the end of the world, which is PayPal stock, versus being priced like you know for great things like Meta and Google. Now, will I be playing short-term options on PayPal, something that expires the next few weeks, being that PayPal is going to report here soon? Uh, the answer to that is... Hell no. Hell no. Wall Street's dumb. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, Wall Street's not very smart. And so I I never want to make a bet based upon Wall Street waking up and realizing PayPal is very undervalued and we should be buying the stock. I don't want to make that bet. They've sold it off to such ridiculous levels. Who's to say they can't sell it off to 40 bucks? Who's to say they can't sell it off to 45 bucks? They already sold us to such dumb prices. Like, let's drop the forward P to eight. Let's drop it to seven. Let's drop it to six. Like, it's silly. It's absolutely silly. It's not smart. But, you know, I don't want to make a bet even if I do believe the stock's going to go up because look at Meta today. I said they were going to come in and smash it and they smashed it even better than I thought they were going to do. And yet look what the stock price reaction is. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to trust Wall Street uh, 
you know, to make short-term things that are going to go your way because Wall Street's not the smartest, as we know, which is why a lot of them can't even keep up with the stock market, right? Can't even keep up with the S&P 500, these folks. Palantir. So Palantir got hit hard today, about 6% moved down. And um, I feel more confident than ever in Palantir. And let me show you something that's very important here that happened in Microsoft's earnings last night. From This is from Microsoft's conference call, folks, okay? This is a piece of a transcript from Microsoft's conference call. Very important, I think, to Palantir. So, they're talking about GitHub, okay? Now on to developers. With GitHub Copilot, we are increasing developer productivity by up to 55% while helping them stay in the flow and bringing the joy back to coding. Quote, we have over 1 million paid Copilot users and more than 37,000 organizations have subscribed to Copilot for business, up 40% quarter over quarter. Now, folks, okay? This GitHub Copilot is basically an AI peer programmer, all right? And what this shows me essentially is the dollars are about to start flowing for AI, okay? Everybody's been looking out there and they're like, okay, there's so much excitement here, uh, but, but where's the money yet, right? And I take you back to what the executive team at Snowflake talked about last quarter. If you watch my channel religiously, you remember I talked about what Snowflake said in their last quarter, right? And what the executives of Snowflake said, they were asked directly, hey, NVIDIA's making all this money on the hardware side. When does it, when do the, when do people start making money on the software side, right? And what the executives basically said is the whole build out from the hardware side is happening this year, right? And will continue to happen in 2024 and future years. But in terms of the software revenues, that starts hitting in a major way in 2024, okay? And so they spoke about that. And what I'm basically seeing in kind of Microsoft's numbers there, right? And what I think is going to, we're going to see play out in Palantir's numbers is I think we're going to see a major ramp up in Palantir's business model overall on the commercial side. Obviously, the government side is going to be pretty exciting as well, but I think we're going to see quite a few commercial folks because it looks like these commercial customers are ready to start using these products and the money's going to start flowing on the software side and for companies like a Palantir, right? So 2024 could be a very good year for Palantir and a much stronger revenue growth year for Palantir than I think a lot of folks are maybe anticipating, especially a lot of analysts on Wall Street, okay? Now, Overall, folks, you've got to work with a sense of urgency in this market, okay? Here's a deal. I'll put it to you like this, okay? We have dividend stocks trading at multi-year lows right now. Many of these dividend stocks are at three-year, five-year, nice Lambo, a pink Lambo, a light pink Lambo. That's interesting. Most of these dividend stocks are at either a three-year, five-year, seven-year, or 10-year lows, folks. Keep that in mind. Dividend stocks at multi-year lows, despite their business is likely being in a much better place than they were you know, let's say five or 10 years ago. We've got big tech, mean and lean, okay? Many of these big tech companies have leaned out their organizations and they're trading actually very cheap based upon historical multiples now at this point in time. And the reason that's so important is even if we talk about recession or recession fears, these companies are running so lean now, they're going to stay insanely profitable even in a recessionary scenario. And they could actually cut costs more if they chose to do so, if they wanted to in a recessionary scenario. So regardless if the economy is good, bad, anything in between, these big tech companies are set up so well now at this point in time. Going into 2022, they were not set up well. A lot of them were bloated, way too many employees, way too big of cost structures. They've leaned out so phenomenally now. They're set up so well for 2024 and into future years now at this point in time, okay? So those companies are looking extremely attractive now. Not only say every single one of them, but most of them, when I would say most of them, Amazon, Meta, Google McDougal, right? Even NVIDIA, to be honest. And the small caps have been completely wrecked, right? Many of these small caps, I mean, the Russell's trading basically lower than it was like three years ago. Small caps have been obliterated. So when do you ever get that many opportunities in the market? When do you ever get dividend stocks at multi-year lows, big tech lean and mean, and trading at the cheapest valuations many of those stocks have been at in, in years, and small caps direct all at the same time? Doesn't happen often, folks. You might get that opportunity every 10 to 20 years. 10 to 20 years is how often. So in a market like this, you've got to work with a sense of urgency. You've got to take this stuff serious. And you don't want to look back and be like, oh, remember all those opportunities? Because remember, just based upon the opportunities that people missed last year, when NVIDIA was trading at 110 and when Meta was trading under $100. And you know, you go through all these different stocks that people just a lot of people missed, right? 
And so you don't want to be in the next group of people that's a year from now, two years from now saying, man, I wish I was taking the market a little more serious. I wish I was learning this stuff because I missed out on so many opportunities. There was like all these crazy opportunities. I missed them out, out on all them, right? I have free resources for you guys in the description area. I got a brand new video. Check that out down there, okay? That goes all into the income statement, a deep breakdown there. If you're a little more advanced, you want to apply to join my private group, the application is down there. Take your game to the next level. If you want to see the moves I'm making in the market, right? You want to see how I build a portfolio and learn that way. You can join the Patreon. It's super cheap to join us in there, right? So I have free resources. I have paid resources. I, you know, get your game up to a higher level, folks, because I'm just telling you, when you've got this in front of you, you only get this every 10, 20 years. And you don't want to be in a situation for this next, you know, six, 12 months, whatever, where you don't really know what you're doing. And you don't know how to, how to identify great opportunities. And then you're looking back a few years from now and you're like, remember when all those stocks were so cheap, right? And then guess what? When all the stocks are expensive again and all the stocks are at multi year highs again, guess what's going to happen? The masses will pile in again. And it'll be the same story, right? So. Yeah, you got to take advantage of this stuff, folks. So check out the description area. Make sure you take advantage of everything I put out there in general, folks. Much love as always. Appreciate you all joining me. Thank you for being subscribed. Tomorrow's going to be a crazy one. It's going to be a crazy live stream on Twitch as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day.